welcome to the channel, friends. As always, man, I am stoked to see you. So Stoker here, and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about some grid coordinates and how to plot a four, a six, and an eight, and the infamous, the mysterious 10-digit grid coordinate. Coming up. So all you need at the end of the day is just a few things. You do need a map, right? I have a, a, a map here. I have a protractor, and this is a, a stock uh, protractor. And I have a pencil, and you can use any pencil that you want at the end of the day, uh, whether it's a mechanical pencil, whether it's a, a wooden pencil. Uh, the size, the, the, the dimensions, whether it's a, you know, a 0.3, a 0.5, a 0.7, or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's a 0.0 or you know, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You know, what you want to avoid using is a marker. You know, something with a huge, with a huge point because that difference is going to be all the difference in the world. It sounds like a recent video. <laughs> hey, so a four. What 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 are we talking about when we talk about grid coordinates? So what we're talking about is the ability to define a location. In, in time and space, well, not necessarily time, but to, to define a location on a map. So a map, of course, is a two-dimensional uh, graphical representation of a portion of the Earth's surface as seen from above and drawn to scale. And, and these are all very important pieces of information about what a map is and what it can do. And so a grid coordinate is, is really, it's a pinpoint precise location for where you're at. You can think of it like an address or a zip code. Uh, you know, starting off with like a zip code, which is a kind of a perfect launching point. A four digit grid coordinate is a thousand meters by a thousand meters. It's a huge swath of land. It's really not that big, right? If you work any kind of property, you know that, you know, it's, it, 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 I, I, I can't remember how many acres uh, but it's not that big of a piece of property. But a thousand meters, so that, that's like, it, it's not 10 football fields, but it's like 10 football fields by 10 football fields. Getting pretty close. But you can imagine, you know, if you're trying to find something uh, that's maybe a huge prominent peak like Mount Rainier, you know, a, t a four digit grid coordinate is, is more than enough because this thing is so huge, man. You can see Mount Rainier, it towers over everything in Western Washington. It's absolutely majestic. If you're looking for a large lake, a four digit grid coordinate is, is gonna help you find the lake, right? But if you were trying to meet somebody it's kind of, so it's kind of like the zip code, right? You can, you can find the part of town that you're trying to go to with a zip code, but you can't find somebody's street, right? You can't find somebody's street. And so that's why we start to zoom in a little bit more, and then we go to a six digit. And a six digit, all that is, 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 is that in that grid square, but we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. And with an eight digit, we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. And with a 10 digit, we're gonna zoom in a little bit more, but I'm gonna show you at the end of the video why you can't plot a 10 digit grid coordinate. Let's take it to the map. Right, so our map system, the military grid reference system, and that's all it is, it's kind of a reference system that divides the Earth's surface into grid squares. And the first grid square that actually starts off in is 100 thousand meter grid square but as we as we zoom in we get down to a thousand meter grid grid coordinates or grid squares and so we see i have lines that move from left to right and these are 34 35 36 37 38 all the way up down and then we reading up so that's 99 0, 0, 0, 0, so that's how we read a map is to the right and then up so the first level of grid coordinates that we have is a four digit grid coordinate. So we'll just say, you know, we could go and start off with say 3802. Um, now, if somebody gave, gave me a, a four digit grid coordinate, you know, I can draw a line right in there in the middle. And so I know that I'm going to be finding 3802. 
So all I have to do is read to the right and then read up to O2. So I know that I'm going to be somewhere in this grid square. And you can imagine, you know, if I was using some like uber large Sharpie or something, and I just, I smudged and I said, hey, hey, th there it is, it, it's, it's, right, it's right there. You know, that, that's, that's how big the marker is. And so it's not that accurate, right? So I know kind of where something may or may not be, uh, but I don't, I, it's not that accurate. So I need to, I need to dial, I need to zoom in, you know, a little bit more. So we'll, we can say, you know, let's go to uh, 3, 8, 6, 0, 2, 4. So if this got me to a 1,000 meter accuracy, this is going to get me to a 100 meter accuracy. So same thing again. I can draw a line and I can cut this down in half. And I can underline these two right here. This is a super huge technique, especially if you're new, just to help make sure that you're not making any mistakes, man, because everybody makes mistakes. So same thing again. I'm going to set my protractor down uh, to 3802. I'm just going to read to the right and then up. And now I need to find uh, 386. Right? So I'm going to read, slide this over until 6 is underneath this grid line right here. Right, all that all it is is just an extension of the of this hash mark, and I'm gonna read zero two four. So this is where it becomes kind of super important uh, to be a little bit more accurate, and I'll show you why uh, at the end of the video what can happen if if I don't do what I'm about to do. So I need to move my protractor over, and so I can make a line a mark directly underneath this black line right here. And I'm going to put my protractor back on so that 6 again is here. I'm going to read up and I'm going to make sure that that black for my pencil is right underneath my grid line. And, and it, although it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it over just, just a little bit more because it, it just wasn't quite happy with that. Check again. 6. Okay, that, that that's that's much gooder. Okay. Oops, I'm making smudges. All right. So, but what I really did there, even though I used a fine tip pencil to make a marking, what I did with a hundred meter is, is I basically I'm not going to do it. I basically took a a a felt marker and I smudged it down. This is basically what I did right there. You can see, right, if I put my, if I measure that, you can see how wide and huge of a swath that is. So you can imagine having a big old marker there. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's accurate, but it's, it's 100 meters, man. You know, I, you can get lost in 100 meters. So we want to dial in and we want to zoom in a little bit more. So the next up is going to be an eight digit. So we can say, uh, you know, three, eight, six, Five zero two four niner, and this is going to get us to within ten meters or thirty-three feet. Pretty stinking accurate. So now I'm going to draw my line in here, and I'm going to underscore these two again. It's just this is the grid square that we're going to right. So I need to put my protractor back down, uh, 3802, and then we're going to read again to the right till we have 6, but then I need to smudge it over until the 5 is directly, th th this little hash mark in between the 6 and the 7, that needs to be in line with the 38 grid line. And then now I can come over and I can read up until I find 0, 4, 9. So there's 4, there's the 4 and a half, and there's the 5. So that 9 is going to be just, just, just underneath this line right there. So again, I need to move this protractor over to the right. Looks like it's going to be somewhere right there. 
We set our protractor back down and make sure that that pencil mark is directly underneath the black line of this, right? And you know, and although I'm going to show you what will happen uh, if you don't do that uh, at the end of the video. You know, you can see that there's a little bit of space between the black line and uh, the plastic edge where it got cut out. And you know, some of them, some of the protractors out there have a lot bigger of a, of a space. And some people like to trim them, and some people don't. And what, I guess it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But what you can see is, long, again, it doesn't matter so long as the mark that you put is directly underneath that black line. And so, you know, if we go and we look at the difference between these two, you know, we can see, you know, between, you know, that, that, that six and that eight digit grid coordinate, man, that, there's quite a bit of space. That's a lot more ac that's a lot more accurate. But let's say, you know, MGRS or G G GPS uses a satellite system. Uh, typically, you're going to have four satellites locked into, into an area when it's giving you your grid coordinates. And it may give you something like three, eight, six, five, seven, zero, two, four, nine, eight. Right, and so again, draw a line right here, and I know that we're looking for three, eight, oh, two, and this is gonna get me to with one meter, or three feet, man, that, that's absolutely, that's ridiculous accurate. And that's the awesome thing about GPS is, you know, if you're in a location where you have a strong satellite signal and it's good, most GPS devices will tell you how accurate your reading is, you know, whether it's within 10 meters or 100 meters, um, but it's going to give you an eight or a 10 digit grid coordinate, which is going to give you down to one meter accuracy. Now that's awesome, but can we actually plot it? So we come down to three eight zero two and we slide our protractor over to six five and then it's going to be just over a little bit and then we're going to read up to uh four nine eight and uh, I, I man my my pencil mark is on that grid coordinate this is crazy so and the, here's why Right, so if I make the, just the tiniest smidge right there, and I set my protractor down to measure it, I can see that that tiniest smidge mark is 25 meters in diameter. 25 meters. That's less accurate than a 10-digit grid coordinate, and that's why you can't plot a 10-digit grid coordinate. You can't do it, so don't even try. So here's what you do. Let's say somebody tells you to go to, we'll just call it three, six, uh, nine, eight, five, O, oh, two, um, five, seven, eight. And they say, hey, go to this grid coordinate. Man, you can be like, awesome. So I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna worry about this because I can't plot it. And I know that I'm going to go to 3602. So now you're just plotting an eight-digit grid coordinate. Don't try to overcomplicate your life just because somebody's giving you a 10-digit trying to be high speed. You can't plot a 10-digit grid coordinate. So what can happen if, uh, if you don't move your protractor over? So if I was trying to plot, uh, you know, 37, uh, we'll just say 8 zero uh zero one seven zero if i didn't if i didn't move my protractor over and i just made a mark right there right then then the actual grid coordinate would be uh three seven Seven five, yeah, you know, wherever it got put there, you know, six five or whatever. But th that, that that accuracy right there. You see what happens, man. Th th this cutout right here is 
about 25 meters in diameter. Man, that's huge. That's why you have to move it. You have to shift your protractor over when you plot in your points, or else it's going to throw you off another 25 meters. And 25 meter difference is huge, man. You can't have that. Now, if you have to go uh, put in a, a request, if somebody's asking for a 10 digit grid coordinate, and you're like, yo, man, I can't plot a 10 digit grid coordinate. Uh, but if they're like, I need a 10 digit grid coordinate, what are you going to do? So let's say uh, you could plot your location and it was, you know, 37700185. If that, was, if that was as close as you could actually plot, you just throw in fives at the end. Just, just meet them in the middle on that. And that's going to get somebody close enough. It could be a request and somebody's using a GPS to drop something off uh, or refill, resupply a cashier or something like that. So j just cut, j just just give them a little bit so that they get what they're looking for. But you could add zeros or fives or whatever whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But fives, it works the best because it kind of cuts splits the difference. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the content of the video. If you did, make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you can stay up to date on some future content. As always, my brothers and sisters, until then, we'll see you.